A blessed and happy Sabbath, everyone. Thank you for joining us again in our worship streaming today. I trust and believe that wherever we are, do separated by distance, that God's presence is with us. Psalm chapter 63 verses 1 to 5, it says, O God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands into your name. And the last verse, my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. May the Lord bless the reading of his words today. Let us pray. A loving God, Father in heaven, I thank you for your presence and thank you for our experience of blessedness with you. Thank you for the Sabbath and thank you for this worship stream. As we come together in worship and in praise, I pray, Father in heaven, that we will encounter you in our lives today. Thank you for the promised rest and peace this Sabbath and be with each one of us today, wherever we are. We ask all this in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our worship streaming will continue as prepared. Room A. Now, what are we supposed to learn about health in here? <coughs> I know one thing. Room A sure is stuffy. <coughs> I can hardly breathe. It doesn't smell all that great either. Kind of like old moldy grass. I'm feeling just a little dizzy. Why is that? Oxygen. Oxygen? Yes, oxygen. That's the problem. We're not getting enough oxygen in this stuffy room. That's why you're dizzy. That's why we're coughing and sniffing. There's not enough oxygen in here. But this isn't the O room, it's the A room, as in I am unable to breathe. Hey, TNB, are you still with us? Affirmative. What's with this room? It's damp and stuffy and definitely lacking in oxygen. What should we do? What is missing? What's missing? Air. Good old-fashioned air. What is here? Well, a room with a carpet, chairs, lamps, and a big curtain. What is behind the big curtain? Are we on a game show? What's behind the big curtain? Let me look. Well, well, what have we here? A big window. Hmm, nice view. I see trees and flowers and a dog. So what is missing inside the room that is outside the room? A dog? What else? Fresh air. Definitely fresh air. What do you have? A window! You do the math. Oh, I get it. If you want more oxygen, you need to get more air. If you need more air, you need to... Open the window! Allow me! <sighs> That's more like it. I can breathe again. I learned in science class that every cell in our body needs oxygen to live. That means that every cell in my body is happy right now. And listen, I don't hear any more coughing and sniffing. Looks like to be healthy, we need lots of pure, fresh air. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the air room.
If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Yeah. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, pat your head. If you're happy and you know it, pat your head. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, pat your head. If you're happy and you know, say amen. Say amen. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. All right. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Pat, pat, amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Amen. All right. Yeah. Putting God first can be difficult. In this video, we'll explore what we can learn from Ruth that will help us put God first in our lives today. Now, Ruth was not an Israelite when she was born. She grew up as a Moabite and probably worshiped Chemosh, the fish god of the Moabites. Chemosh was also known as the destroyer. In 2 Kings 3.27, we see the king of Moab offering his son and heir as a blood sacrifice to Chemosh. Now, it's possible that Ruth came to worship Jehovah long before her life began to go downhill. Naomi, her mother-in-law, spoke of Jehovah the loving God of the Israelites, who rescued his people from slavery and called them to love and respect one another. In a sad and dark turn of events, Naomi lost her husband and two sons within a decade. Her daughters-in-law, Ruth and Orpah, were devastated. The situation was desperate. Naomi decided to return to Israel and suggested that both daughters-in-law went back home. Orpah eventually agreed to go, but Ruth refused. Even at this darkest hour in her life, she didn't blame God for her circumstances. Instead, she put God first in her life and insisted on traveling with Naomi to continue worshiping Jehovah. Ruth said to Naomi, her mother-in-law, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Life may be difficult for you right now. Putting God first doesn't guarantee that our lives will be easy, but it does mean we will find peace and salvation. Ruth ended up finding a loving husband and joined the people of God. Oh, and here's something you might not know. Ruth had the honor of becoming a direct ancestor of Jesus himself the savior of the world. Ruth put God first, and her example compels us to do the same. As we return the tithe and promise, we are challenged to put God first.
Genesis 12, 1-9 The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household, to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. A blessed and happy Sabbath, everyone. Our study today has been inspired by Bangyani, who read our scripture reading. A few weeks ago, he was also inspired to send me a recorded scripture reading even before I asked him for it. And he chose Genesis chapter 12 himself. It's the story of Abraham's obedience to God's call for him to abandon the land of his people and birth and go to a land that God will show him. And I thought that the story of Abraham fits well as a continuation of our study from last Sabbath on surrender. So in our short study today, I hope to highlight the blessing of obedience. 
the last Sabbath, I mentioned that surrender is an active and dynamic act in a Christian's life. Surrender is one of the most important acts of faith. And today, let me add obedience to our most important acts of faith. And by the way, as Seventh-day Adventists, we love to highlight obedience. We claim to be a community of faith who keeps the commandments of God. Now let me immediately point out that in the expressions of our Christian faith and experience, surrender and obedience are closely connected with each other. They go hand in hand. They are bound to each other. That you cannot do one without doing the other. And so there can be no surrender without obedience, and no obedience must happen without surrender. Because the moment we submit and yield ourselves to an authority, we are also making a commitment to conform and follow the demands of that authority. And Ellen White, in describing the religion of Jesus Christ, highlighted both surrender and obedience. And here's what she said. The religion of Jesus Christ is the immediate, voluntary, trustful surrender of the heart to God, a coming into union with Christ in confidence and affectionate obedience to do all His commandments through the merits of Jesus Christ. It is a decisive act of the individual committing to the Lord the keeping of the soul. 1888 Materials, page 281. Friends, brothers and sisters, I hope that this is the religion that we have identified ourselves today, that we belong to the religion of Jesus Christ, a religion where surrender and obedience happen not to a tyrannical ruler, but to a Savior who died for us on the cross. We offer our allegiance not to an oppressive and repressive authority, but to a loving Lord. Our surrender and obedience are not meritorious acts. Rather, they are grateful expressions of the merits that we have already received in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And that our surrender and obedience flow from a heart that is full of gratitude. Let us go back to Genesis 12. In verse 1, God said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land that I will show you. Do you see what God was asking from Abraham here? God was asking him to abandon the comforts of his country, his people, and his father's household. Abraham was being asked to let go of everything that represents security and safety in his life. Hebrews 11 verse 8 even says that he did not know where he was going. God simply said, to the land I will show you. God was not only commanding Abraham to abandon his secure and settled life, he was also commanding him to embrace something that was completely unknown to him. But in spite of the heavy and difficult nature of God's command, the Bible says that Abraham went as the Lord had told him. However, it is not Abraham's obedience that is most significant in Genesis 12. Alongside God's command are a series of the promised blessings. Yes, the personal demands on Abraham were great, but God's covenant blessings were greater. Let me pause here for a moment and highlight something powerful in our spiritual experience. There is a promise of divine blessedness in obedience. And this divine blessedness is greater than anything we can possibly give up in obedience. 
And here's God's promised blessings to Abraham. In Genesis 12, 2 and 3, God said to him, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name bright and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Now, we don't have a time today to consider in detail each of these promises. But all of them, without doubt, has been fulfilled and even still being fulfilled. Because the one who promised is able and faithful. Now, look at how many times God said, I will, in these few verses. The greatness of these promised blessings comes from the one who made them. God said, I will. You know, it's interesting that Stephen in Acts 7 said that God first appeared to Abraham in Ur of the Chaldeans, where he told him to go to the land he will show him. But Abraham did not go to this new land right away. Instead, he stopped at Haran, where he lived and settled until his father, Terah, died. He did obey, but it was partial obedience. And I find it interesting that we see no details of Abraham's journey from Ur to Haran and of his life in Haran. The biblical story of Abraham and his powerful encounters with God began when he completely obeyed God and followed him all the way to the land he showed him. Friends, brothers and sisters, how is our lives of obedience today? Is it partial or total surrender and obedience? The most important blessing in total obedience is an encounter with God. The blessing of His abiding presence supersedes any other blessing. But do we sometimes compromise these encounters with God in our partial obedience to His will and plans for us? Have we been suppressing God's power in our lives because of our failure to completely obey Him? These are serious questions to think about. Now, even after he completely obeyed God and came to the land of Canaan, there were times in Abraham's life that he took matters into his own hands. There were times when he was conflicted about God's promised blessings. He had moments of unbelief. For how could he be a great nation when his wife Sarah was barren and he had no heir? There was also a time when he doubted God's promise of protection and he compromised his integrity by saying that Sarah, his wife, was his sister. And Abraham soon found out the futility and painful consequences of his own efforts. But in spite of his human weakness, he said his imperfect life, his wavering hope, his faltering confidence, all before the throne of God. Ellen White in Patriarchs and Prophets, page 128, said that Abraham, the friend of God, set us a worthy example. His was a life of prayer. And here's the good news. God's faithfulness in his covenant promises to him never faltered. He brought Abraham back to where he needed to be again and again. Oh, friends, brothers and sisters, it does not mean to say that when we surrender ourselves in obedience to God, that we will not have those moments of doubt and unbelief. Like Abraham, these moments will come. But I hope that we, when we find ourselves in these moments of doubt and unbelief, that we will bring them to God in prayer and allow Him to take us back to where we need to be, to where God wants us to be 
in a place where we can have encounters with him and experience the blessing of obedience. To conclude, let me share another statement from Ellen White about Jesus and his example of obedience to God's will and plans for him. Desire of Ages, page 208, Jesus accepted God's plans for him, and day by day the Father unfolded his plans. So should we depend upon God that our lives may be the simple outworking of his will. I hope and pray that as we consciously recognize God's leadings and plans for us, that our lives will become simply outworkings of God's will. May the Lord bless us today. This is my prayer. Let us pray. Our loving God, Father in heaven, we again return to you all the glory, honor, and the prize. And thank you for this reminder, powerful reminder of the blessing of obedience. And thank you, Lord, that as we come to you in surrender, 
and in obedience that we will encounter you in our lives. And I pray, Father in heaven, that each one of us will treasure this experience that we have with you, these encounters that we have with you, that more than the specific blessings that we can receive, that divine encounter is the most important experience that we can have. So thank you for blessing us today and for blessing us in the coming week until we come together again in worship and in praise. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone and bye-bye.